How's it going, fellow club members? This is Leo Damascus with the Steam Controller Fan Club. And this is going to be kind of a quick video. I just wanted to show off something that I've been working on here. Uh, this is what I call my uh, keyboard and mouse analog control scheme. Uh, you can see that most of it is similar to the default uh, keyboard and mouse control scheme that comes with the templates here. In fact, let me pull up the default one so that you can see and compare against them. So you can see we've got the keyboard and mouse with the uh, movement on the stick, the mouse, flashlight, etc. And if I pull up the analog version, you'll see that it's changed these two so that they're radial menus. This radial menu is just so that it's, you can do more weapon selection, but this one is where the real magic is happening. So you see, what I've done right here is I've made an invisible menu that has up to 16 different directions listed. So you can see this one goes up. We have an upright one right here. But these other ones, I have up, upright and up, right, right. What those are doing is they're using the activators to try and pulse this this D button while at the same time holding down this W button so that that way we're getting the D button only being pressed half of the time while the other one's being pushed the full time and the goal here is to work around the the shortcomings of Valve's default analog emulation control scheme because that one tends to slow down your character overall and I just wanted to to be able to improve it so that there were up to 16 different directional inputs that I can use. So now I'm going to open up Half-Life 2 and just play through some of it so that you can see how well this works and I'll keep on the some of the display hints here so that you'll be able to you'll be able to see more of what's going on with the controller. So just one moment while I pull this up. Alright, with a little bit of finagling, I've actually gotten to an early part in the game where I have a little bit of freedom for movement to show you what's going on. But it's also kind of quiet so that I can explain what exactly is happening here. So you can see if I press on the up button, it's just going to press the move forward like normal. If I do upright, it's going to move forward and to the right. But if I do up upright, you can see that what it's doing, if you look at the bottom left corner, is it's pressing move forward and it's also tapping on the D button. And so using that, it manages to go to the up and right, but in a way that is more subtle than if I were just holding it that way. And the same is true if I decide to do this, it will go up more subtly when it goes right, as opposed to here where it's just going right. Same is true for all of the buttons on this on these 16 degrees of movement. So you can see, you have a little bit more finesse with moving around this way. And that's despite the fact that we're using an entirely keyboard and mouse setup here. So one thing that is nice, this does kind of pair well with my descriptive keys configuration that I described before. I'll put, a, I'll put a card in the top right so that you can take a look at that if you haven't seen it before. But you can see that it's fairly similar here. Except with the up arrows instead of the WASD. And so using that you can get something that feels fairly controller-like. So hopefully that gets those of you who've been having trouble coming up with a usable control scheme when 
you you just need to use uh, an actual mouse in order to move around. Hopefully, this will help you to get something that's a little bit closer to what you're looking for. Anyway, this is Leo Damascus, and I'm signing off for now. Take care, guys, and I'll see you at the next club meeting.